This is one of the most ridiculous pieces of nutrition advice I have ever heard. I honestly thought this guy was joking when I first started watching, but then I realized that unfortunately, he's that serious. The video I'm talking about is from a guy named Paul Saladino. One of his major controversial claims, which has helped him build a following of over 500,000 people on TikTok and millions on Instagram and other platforms, is that you should stop eating vegetables. Why would you eat plant leaves? If you're surprised to hear someone says that vegetables are bad for you, you're definitely not alone. But Paul Saladino is an advocate for something called an animal-based diet. This is similar to the carnivore diet, which has been gaining a ton of popularity on social media over the last couple years, except that he includes a few more foods besides just meat. Today, I'm going to explain some of the claims about vegetables that Paul Saladino makes and give you the straight answer about whether anyone needs to be worried about their vegetable consumption. So make sure you keep watching till the end. Hello everyone, it's Andres here. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm a registered dietitian and weight loss expert who helps busy career focused parents lose weight in a way that's simple, sustainable, and based on the latest evidence from nutrition research. And I really like to put an emphasis on the evidence-based part because in today's video, we're looking at some pretty controversial claims and I'm going to explain what the research really has to say. But first, a quick reminder that if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button now. I release a new video every week with all of my best weight loss advice from 12 years as a dietitian, along with plenty of reaction videos to questionable nutrition content I come across online. Now let's get into the video. We're going to start off by watching the video clip from TikTok that I'm reacting to today from Paul Saladino. It's just over 30 seconds long. And even though I decided to show this one today, he has tons of other videos over his TikTok sharing this same exact message. Let's take a look. You sometimes ask me, which vegetables are okay to eat? My answer is no. Why would you eat plant leaves and stems and roots and seeds? These are the most highly defended parts of plants. Plants do want you to eat the fruit to move the seeds to the next generation, but they don't want you to destroy the seeds in the process. They definitely don't want you to eat the leaves or the stems or the roots because those are necessary to make the seeds as well. They put defense chemicals in those parts of plants. Things like oxalates, lectins, saponins, Digestive enzyme inhibitors like tannins. These are gonna mess up your digestion and your hormones, generally make you feel horrible, and they're gonna make you fart a lot too. You guys know what I like? I like the least toxic plant. Okay, so to start, let's take a look at Paul Saladino's qualifications just to tell you a little bit more about him. Paul is a medical doctor. He's board certified in psychiatry. But it's an important point to make that just because someone is a doctor does not mean that they're a credible source of information or nutrition information. I get comments about this stuff all the time but he or she's a doctor and they know what they're talking about. Well, not always, let me prove that to you. Medical school curriculums have a very limited amount of nutrition education added in their entire career path. A recent survey published in 2023 ask over 1,000 medical students questions about their nutrition education, and it found that they receive an average 1.2 hours of formal nutrition education per year, with lots of schools not even offering one course in nutrition. The worst part about this is that it's not their fault, as over 88% of students that were surveyed, they said that receiving formal nutrition education should be a requirement to be able to graduate, so they wanted to receive more training. Over 400 students that were surveyed here were from Ivy League and prestigious universities universities like Harvard, Boston University, and University of Massachusetts. So titles or credentials might give you a part of the picture in some cases, but to get an idea of whether someone is giving good information, we have to dive deep into the research behind what they're saying, rather than only judging their knowledge based on credentials. I'm generalizing here about doctors. There's a lot of great doctors out there who do have specialties in nutrition. So let's take a look at what Paul is talking about when he says that vegetables are highly defended. This is a common argument used by people who support the carnivore diet. In the video, Paul mentions oxalates, lectins, saponins, and tannins. These are all part of a group of compounds called anti-nutrients, which interfere with the absorption of nutrients or have adverse effects on digestion or metabolism. The key here is that while many foods contain anti-nutrients, they're usually present in very small amounts and are not typically harmful when consumed as part of a balanced diet. However, excessive intake of foods high in anti-nutrients may lead to nutrient deficiencies or other health issues, just like anything in excess will. You can drink a lot of water and you can die. I'll give you some examples of common anti-nutrients and the foods that you'll find in them. One example is phytates. Phytates are found in seeds, nuts, grains, and legumes, and they can bind to minerals such as calcium, magnesium, 
iron, and zinc, reducing their absorption in the digestive tract. Second, we have oxalates, which Paul mentioned, and they're found in things like spinach, beet greens, rhubarb, and certain nuts. They can bind to calcium to form chrysoxalates, and in certain sensitive people, they can increase the risk of kidney stones. Then you have tannins. These are found in tea, coffee, wine, and some fruits, and they can interfere with the absorption of iron and other minerals. And then lectins, which are proteins found in grains and legumes and some vegetables. Now, while some lectins have beneficial effects, others can interfere with nutrient absorption and may cause some digestive issues. I have talked about lectins before, specifically in my video on Dr. Gandhi, which I'll link in the description box below. Which, by the way, he's a guy that says, don't eat fruit. Paul Saladino says, eat fruit, vegetables are bad. And then Dr. Gandhi says, don't eat fruit. Anyways. But what is important to know here is that lectin-rich foods that people commonly eat, such as grains and legumes, are almost always cooked in some way before they're eaten, which eliminates almost all the lectins in these foods. And the final example I'll mention is goitrogens, which are found in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, and kale. Goitrogens can interfere with thyroid function by inhibiting the uptake of iodine. So while anti-nutrients may have adverse effect on nutrient absorption and metabolism, many of the foods containing these compounds also provide valuable nutrients and health benefits. Additionally, certain food preparation methods such as soaking, sprouting, fermenting, and cooking can help reduce those levels of anti-nutrients in foods and improve nutrient availability. In general, for most people, there's no need to overly be concerned about anti-nutrients in vegetables as they're typically present in relatively small amounts and are outweighed by the nutritional benefits of consuming a variety and balanced diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables. Most people can safely consume vegetables containing anti-nutrients without experiencing any type of adverse effects on their health. When it comes down to individuals with certain health conditions, and dietary restrictions such as kidney stones or thyroid disorders, maybe gout, it may be necessary to limit intake of specific anti-nutrient rich foods or consult with a healthcare professional or dietitian for a personalized dietary advice. Now that we have that cleared up, want to know what I think is a bit funny about this video? In it, he adds a screenshot of a study, which he may be doing just to make his claims seem more legitimate. But what happens when we take a bit closer look at this specific study? Researchers here were looking at goitrogens, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, and their impact on thyroid health. And what they found was that the consumption of typical serving sizes of broccoli, Chinese cabbage, bok choy, broccoli rabe, have a goitrogen content at concentrations that are far lower that would impair thyroid function. When it comes down to some of these type of kales, collards, and Brussels sprouts, you've had to eat over one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of these per day for several months to have any effect on your thyroid health. So this study is actually going against the point he makes in the video, but it's very common for a lot of these influencers to simply take things out of context or simply point out a study that that says, well, this is bad for you. But then in reality, when they look at the smaller details of some of those research studies, you will find, for example, that the dose that you would have to get to get the same consequences of those studies, it's stupid high. And it doesn't make sense and nobody would actually consume that amount. So despite what the actual research says about plant compounds, Paul constantly drives home this idea that vegetables are bad. And here's the evidence that he cares about. It's a lot of, I think, I believe. But I think it's important. I strongly believe. But the last time I checked, that is not scientific evidence. Now, just when I thought he was totally anti-vegetable, I came across this video. Take a look. Both of these meals contain 1600 calories, but you are going to be much more full for longer with better energy if you eat unprocessed foods like this. You got two grass-fed beef burgers. You got three ounces of raw cheese, a sweet potato, half an avocado, grilled peppers and squash, fresh squeezed orange juice, another orange for good measure, and kiwi. And when you eat whole animal and plant foods like this, you are going to be less hungry and you will have an easy your time losing weight, you will feel better and be healthier long term. So vegetables are apparently bad, but sweet potatoes, peppers and squash are okay. Well, keep scrolling through his videos and you might see this. Frank's Red Hot. It's a no for me, guys. It's full of nightshades. We know that these peppers open the gap junctions in your gut. That's why it hurts when you poop afterwards because your gut is inflamed. Nightshades are a family of vegetables that include potatoes, eggplants, tomatoes, and all kinds of peppers. Contrary to what Paul says here, most people can safely consume nightshade vegetables and they contain a lot of beneficial nutrients. The only disclaimer here is will be that individuals with specific sensitivities or medical conditions may need to avoid or limit their intake of this kind of vegetables because of certain compounds that they contain, but these people are in the minority. What about sweet potatoes? Okay. Let's take a look at this. Even sweet potatoes have defense chemicals. And how about squash? Is that okay to eat? Well, interestingly, vegetables in the squash family are actually high in lectins, which Paul claimed earlier that you shouldn't really eat. Interesting. 
Now, I could honestly go on all about the problems in every single video Paul Soledino makes, but that will be like an hour long video essay. There are a lot of professionals, including doctors, constantly debunking his clickbait videos like Dr. It, who recently debunked his claims that eating an order of fries at McDonald's is equal to smoking a pack of cigarettes per day. So what is the big takeaway here? Keep eating your vegetables. They're high in nutrients, they're high in fiber, and these anti-nutrients are going to be insignificant for the majority of people, particularly once a lot of these vegetables are cooked. Guys like this are one of the biggest reasons nutrition is so confusing because not only are people like him and Gary Brecka and Dr. Gundry and others who I've talked about in previous videos spreading misinformation, they're constantly contradicting themselves. And this even creates more noise and controversy that overshadows the more balanced and sustainable approach to nutrition that would actually lead to optimal health for the majority of people. Regardless of their affiliations and what they're selling, which I have talked about in the past, which they do, they have an interest, they wanna build an audience. And yes, they could end up helping a lot of people by the advice that they give. Because when you make some of these crazy changes, you're probably going to improve parts of your health, but it doesn't have to be dramatic changes the way that he presents them. He wants to do clickbait content that will get you to watch, will get you to comment, it's polarizing content here, and because of that, he gets more views, he gets more people to see his website, and he gets to sell his supplements. I forgot to even mention the associations this guy had with Liver King, and we know, or maybe you know, about the controversies about a lot of his content and that fact that he was taking performance enhancing drugs. But anyways, that'll be a separate video or just for another occasion. But that's everything I wanted to cover here today, guys. Even though I know Paul's TikTok's page has hundreds more videos that are equally problematic. But anyways, thank you so much for tuning in here today. And I hope that this helped clear up some of the confusion around the topics of vegetables and animal-based diets. If you come across any other videos you'd like me to watch or react to or any topic related to nutrition or weight loss, make sure you leave a comment below, tag me on the video you would like me to react to, or send me a message on Instagram at Andres Ayesta and let me know. Bye for now, and I'll see you in the next video.